What's up everyone, it's an I saw here and today I'm going to be talking about my pickup from the Spyderco factory second sale. I got a Spyderco military, just the basic S30V satin blade with the black G10 handle. And just saying that I got a knife from the Spyderco second sale is probably going to make a lot of people mad and they're probably already typing in the comment section saying how bad the website experience was. And yes, it was bad, but in about 20 minutes I was able to get through. And so I guess I'll just leave it at that. But what I'm gonna talk about is, I'm just gonna talk about the things that were the defects on this and just overall kind of my first impressions of this knife specifically. If you guys haven't seen um, Idea315, uh, he sent me a military a couple months ago, I think, and I really did like it. So thanks for him for sending me that. And so this was on such a good deal that I had to pick it up. And so this is gonna probably be a primary work knife for me. And so really the issues don't bother me all that much. You know, you'll see a lot of people kind of upset about the issues that they have, but my thought is that you know you're buying a factory second. And so you know that there is definitely gonna be an issue with it. And you know, when people buy like the Spyderco Drunken off the factory second sale, yes, it could be a very good deal and you could get one with great quality, or you could get one with the logo wing on the blade looking all funny and weird. It's just one of those things where you always gotta keep that in mind. And so I, or how about I talk about this blade really quick. So this blade grind, it just wasn't the thinnest behind the edge. I did sharpen it. It's kind of a semi-polished edge as you can kind of see some light reflecting, but this was a pretty wide bevel from the factory. If you can see right on my thumb, I have my edge here and then that little um, kind of a streak up top over that secondary bevel. That is some factory scratches. And really on my stone, it's kind of a bad representation, but I was kind of holding my stone like this. It was flat on the table, of course, but I would put my knife uh, completely flat on the stone and then barely raise it up and then go. And so I was holding almost as low of an angle as I really felt comfortable holding, but I still didn't fully reach the end of that factory bevel but it's not really that big of a deal to me. So let's check the thickness behind the edge of this knife. Um, I'm getting about 21 and a half thousandths behind the edge. So overall, kind of your average Spyderco um, thickness behind the edge, a little bit thicker than normal, but this is gonna be a work knife. You know, maybe I get it reground, but the regrind would cost more than the knife itself. So I don't really know. Some of the visual defects, I guess there were a couple scratches on this clip. I don't know if those are gonna get to show up here. And then there was one scratch on this G10 right there. And one interesting thing about the action on this knife is the detent out of the box was super strong. I got this knife Friday, so I am trying to break it in or I have pretty much been trying to break it in the whole time and it has gotten a lot better, but it was to the point where I could not spidey flick the, uh, the knife out of the box. Like I just couldn't. So basically what I did is I just kind of sat the knife like this, kind of where it was about to close with that detent and it did work. I set it like that pretty much overnight. And so that helped a little bit and just a lot of opening and closing has helped break it in. But the action is a little bit on the gritty side. And one thing to keep in mind, I don't want you guys to think that I'm really complaining about the defects of this knife because, you know, I know that I know what I was getting into when I bought it and overall I'm happy with it. But I have taken this apart before and I want to show you guys something that is very interesting to me. A uh, T15 pivot on this knife, which is pretty cool. You know, this little stubby driver, a lot of people really like it and really suggest it. I mean, it's okay. It is does provide very good torque for like... Um, if you're removing a Loctited screw, but it just isn't my favorite. It just seems a little bit unwieldy to me. Oh yeah, these are T6 uh, body screws. So it is kind of weird, T15 pivot with T6 body screws. But uh, let me know in the comment section if you guys got anything on Spyderco Factory second sale. I'm gonna unscrew this off camera just cause I'm kinda sticking my arms out here to unscrew the screw and I'm kind of slipping off. But um, yeah, I saw the um, like the Maximet PM2 and the Maximet Para 3, those were going for very good prices. I also saw a native um, for like the S30V native for like 37 bucks, which is just a very good deal. So here we have the internals of the knife 
And if you don't know, there is a date on the inside of these. I don't know if it's the same with every single Spyderco out there, but look at the date on mine. April of 2013. So this is a very old model. I really don't know why it was in this or why it wasn't in the factory second sale of 2013. I guess it's maybe just lodged in a deep dark corner of the Spyderco uh, factory, but yeah, that's pretty old. And if you guys didn't notice already, this is the old military before they increased that lanyard hole size. And so that is interesting to me. I mean, uh, I'm not really mad about it because it's a work knife, but it still just is something that's interesting. And if we look at, sorry, this is a little bit greasy. Don't really know how that happened, but look at, let me clean this off really quick. Look at this pivot here. Do you see those marks? Those are actually like kind of scratches on there. And um, I think that is what ma is making the action a little bit on the gritty side, which is interesting. So it's just like, I don't really know how that happened. You know, maybe I honestly have no clue. Maybe they're grinding the knife and they slipped on the grinder or something. I honestly have no idea, but I don't really care about the action but it's still one thing to keep in mind. It just kind of makes me wonder, is that be, did this make it a factory second or was it just, or would this be a knife that is going out to anybody out there? So I'm gonna put it back together. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, uh, this military, it is pretty easy to take apart and put it back together. You know, if you're doing a scale swap or something, that probably would be a little bit annoying with the uh, lanyard barrel there. But overall, just doing it like this, really have no issues. Oh no, that washer fell on my table and I have no fingernails, so I can't pick it up. Oh wow, I'm just on the struggle bus right here. Just go ahead and skip 10 seconds in advance. There we go, I got the washer off. I'm not really trying to clean this or anything. I'm just trying to put it back together. But overall, the sharpening was fine. The grind from the factory actually seemed not bad which um, seems like recently with me and Spyderco's, I have not been getting very good grinds um, from the factory. If you're wondering if the edge is burnt, I honestly didn't even um, uh, test it to see if the edge was burnt. I'm just kind of in a habit of sharpening Spyderco's right out of the box because I assume that they are. But I have used this knife a little bit here, and I'm looking forward to using it a lot more. You know, I would like it to be thinner behind the edge, but this whole uh, PM2 Para 3 military line kind of tends to run to, uh, around that 20 thousandths behind the edge. While I have had experience with like the Sage 5 Lightweight, which is very thin, that way too tightened down. That's still very tight. This knife was centered out of the box, so I pretty much just will get it centered. No blade play, good action, but still has that very strong detent. Uh, let me compare it to some of my other knives so that you can kind of get a feel for it. So I don't know if I can do this spidey flick without moving my wrist. I'll try to just use my finger. Okay, so I was able to do that, but that was pretty hard to do. Here's my Sage 5 Lightweight. Just very easy. After opening this, it's like you barely had to do anything to open it. It's just like, it's almost hard to fail. Um, my newest Spider Co., which is actually newer than this one, which you guys haven't seen, the uh, Manix 2. I'm very excited to use this guy, um, CTS XHP Steel. Uh, it's got the translucent ball bearing lock, which is interesting. I honestly didn't really know because I didn't see it in the pictures. I bought this. Um, from someone on the secondary, but it is good. The action is very smooth out of the box. I'm looking to get some aftermarket scales on this, and I think I'm going to get a regrind for it. So that is exciting, except for me, I was doing some research on aftermarket scales, and I didn't see anything in stock right now. Um, I, I'm looking for my Carta scales to be more specific. Flytanium has some titanium ones, but uh, I like titanium. I honestly just want to try my Carta or not try my Carta, but get some my Carta on it. 
And so I didn't see any on RC Blade Works. I didn't see any on Sharp Dress Knives. I looked at Shepherd's CC. I think that's the name. Didn't see any on, see any on there. So if you see some, please let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to hear from you. But that's going to do it for the video. I just kind of wanted to showcase this Factory Second Spyderco Military. Overall, I'm very excited to carry this. The Military is just a great knife. The lockup on this is very good what would i call that like 45 percent it's just absolutely no blade play whatsoever just super strong and i'm really excited to use this knife and so that's gonna do it for the video thank you guys for watching i'll throw up the rest of the family up here uh don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one